And the blowing of the trumpet is mentioned 10 times in the Quran explicitly and over a dozen ahadith mention the concept of it as well very explicitly. Of them is the famous hadith Muttafaq Ali Bukhari and Muslim, the highest level of authenticity uh, in which uh, Abu Huraira narrated that, that one day uh, a Jewish person was uh, selling, was selling um, a, a piece of merchandise and a Muslim uh, man purchased it from him but he gave him a a smaller price he's trying to negotiate he gave him a smaller price so uh, the Jewish man said La Musa al-bashar. no way I'm gonna sell this to you for this price and I swear the Qasam by the one who chose and preferred Musa over all of mankind he's making a Qasam there is no way this sale is gonna go forth you know I'm not gonna be skanked here you're gonna pay me more than this so when he said, I swear by the one who chose Musa over all of mankind, one of the Ansar stood up and slapped him across the face and said, how dare you say the one who chose Musa over mankind and the Prophet is alive amongst us. You should have said what? The one who chose the Prophet, that's what he's trying to say. How dare you say this? Okay. Um, so this, uh, this Ansari, I'm sorry, this Jewish person went straight to the Prophet and said, Ya Abul Qasim, because the Jews would address him with his kunya. Ya Abul Qasim, I am a person who has protection and honor from you. I have dhimma, I have ahd. In other words, I'm a citizen. That's our language. I'm a citizen. How can I be slapped by one of the people here? Notice he is complaining directly to the Prophet ﷺ. How can you do this? So the man, so the Prophet ﷺ said, why did he slap your face? So the man was called and he explained. He's trying to defend himself. Ya Rasulullah, he said this and I defended and what not. So the Prophet ﷺ became angry until the redness was clear in his... This hadith is Bukhari Muslim by the way. It's not some obscure book. This is in our most important traditions. His face became red. And he said, لا تفضل بين أولياء الله or in one version, بين أنبياء الله Do not have this argument who is better than each other between the Anbiya of Allah. Don't go down this route. Do not go down this route of each prophet is better than the other. Don't do this. Because when the trumpet will be blown, فَيُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ He's now, this is the whole reason I'm bringing this hadith is this one. When the trumpet will be blown, and all who are in the heavens and earth will fall down unconscious. The Prophet is reciting a verse in the Quran. Uh, this is in the Quran. So he's saying this phrase, which we're going to mention later on. And then it will be blown again. And I will be the first to raise my head. I'll be the first to come out of the grave. And I will see Musa already holding on to one of the stools or one of the pillars of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so I do not know I do not know was the first time that he fainted enough that he doesn't have to faint again or did I actually resurrect was I resurrected before him or was he resurrected before me now the point of the point of this hadith is very deep uh, you understand why I mention it. He mentions the phrase trumpet being blown. That's why we mention it. But the hadith is very interesting. So remember Musa fainted in this world. When he asked to see Allah, he fell down. We will learn today's lecture and also next inshallah Wednesday's lecture that the Quran mentions that when the trumpet is blown, all who are in the heavens and earth will fall unconscious in a faint. Right? Uh, so, sa'iqa man fi samawati wal ard. Sa'iqa means to lose consciousness. And فَخَرَّ Musa Sa'iqa. The same word is used for Musa. Musa fell Sa'iq. The Prophet is saying, when I get out of the Qabr and I think I'm the first person, I will see Musa ahead of me. I will see Musa already in sajda holding on to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, he's telling the Muslim, you do not know who is better. Even though we know who is better, which is another point, by the way, right? I should mention this later on. Let me finish this hadith. He is saying, he is, right now, the Jewish person is here, the Muslim person is here. And he is saying something to make the both of them realize, especially the Muslim, because the Jewish man did not say anything wrong from his perspective. Whereas the Muslim man is getting angry. How dare you praise Musa? Smack! 
and the Prophet is so angry at the Muslim for his overzealousness that his face is bright red. Which is a sign the Prophet would only get that angry very rarely. And he said, do not do this. Do not put us above the other. Then he said, when I get out of the Qabr, I will see Musa ahead of me. His hand will be on the, the you know, the, the, every chair has, you know, the, the pegs. I was looking at the pegs. His hand will be on the peg of Allah's uh, throne. And I do not know. Was his first sa'iq a cause for his exemption that he did not fall down in sa'iq when the trumpet was blown? Or was he resurrected before me and he made his way there? I, w I don't know. But there is one blessing that he has that I don't have and that he's going to be already there. Okay, So that's the hadith. And from it we learn there is something called the trumpet being blown. In Sahih Muslim we learn, and a long hadith, the phrase that is, is, is uh, uh, what we need to know. In Sahih Muslim we learn that the Prophet ﷺ said that the trumpet will be blown. And everyone who hears the trumpet they will turn their head to the direction of the sound and their heads will go towards that sound in an attempt to listen to the uh, trumpet. And the first person to hear it, this hadith in Sahih Muslim, will be a man who is busy preparing water to feed his camel. You know, the, the, there's a trough of water, you put it for the camel. He's preparing his water to feed his camel and he will fall dead on top of that water and all the people will fall dead after him. So this is graphic, vivid detail. There's going to be a trumpet and the person, everybody's going to look, trying to find where's that noise coming from. And then the first person to hear is going to be this shepherd type of person and he will fall down. In another hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad and other books, our Prophet ﷺ said, the day of judgment will not occur. Uh, sorry, the day of judgment will occur when two men will spread a garment in front of them, the buyer and the seller, but the trumpet will be blown before they can buy and sell, before the garment is picked up. And the, trump, the, the hour will not be established until a man has milked the she-camel and taken away the milk, but he will not be able to drink it. And the hour will be established when a man is repairing a tank for his, uh, again, the water trough here, and his animal will not drink from it, meaning he'll, he has it ready, but the animal will not drink from it. And the hour will be established when a person has raised a porcel of food to his mouth, and he will not be able to eat it. And this is referenced in the Quran, وَمَا أَمْرُ السَّاعَةِ إِلَّا كَلَمْحِ الْبَصَرِ the day of judgment is like the twinkling of an eye. It's going to come suddenly. And Allah says in the Quran, uh, It's going to come all of a sudden. There is no warning for the trumpet to come. This is explicit in the Quran and the Sunnah. The first trumpet that will be blown, there is no warning signal. There's no test message. It's going to come so suddenly, the person has the merchandise, the buyer is bargaining, they're both going to die. And feeding the animal, both going to die. Raising the food, raising the, the milk, both going to die. Nobody's going to get anything. That's how suddenly it is going to come. So, all of these evidences clearly demonstrate the blowing of a trumpet. Actual trumpet. A sound is going to be heard.